We're gonna open up today's panels with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. We have any fans out there? Oh, I know it's early, louder, come on. Thank you, now help me give all uh, deadline contenders welcome to Francesca Sloan, co-creator, showrunner, and EP, and Maya Erskine, star. Welcome. Oh, yeah, you're in. But before we begin, here's a look at Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Just picking up speed. We gotta hurry. John, John, are you with me? Do you have more of those boxes? Like without the logo? Okay, she's moving. John, can you hear me? All right, just need a little more time. What if she's coordinating the drop? Like, like if she's... Like, if she's meeting someone nearby, we need to get this box right now. John. You're making a mess. Can I, can I have this box? Uh, no. Uh, what if I buy this? I'll buy this box. She just ditched the phone. What are you doing? Jesus Christ, John, are you shopping right now? Okay, I... I... Thanks. Exiting to Broadway. Okay, she's leaving. Take the box. She's gonna jump to her left. My daughter again, I'm a oh. beach I'm a beach I'm so Watch sorry. it. I'm sorry. What? sorry. What is wrong with you? Sorry. Francesca and Maya, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, this scene is such a great example of the chemistry, Maya, that you and Donald have. Um, no matter whether we were seeing fight scenes or love scenes or just how you guys were putting together strategy for a case, it, it's very intimate. Um, what can you share about how you and Donald found a place of trust to be able to film these scenes? Yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time together. It was um, because it was just us two. And I think when we first met, we were filming the first episode. So we actually shot a bit in chronological order. So it, it helped with the chemistry because I think in the beginning, we're still getting to know each other. We don't quite trust each other. We so we were developing our friendship in that first month of shooting. And I think it was in the subway scene uh, when we're writing it that like him and I started sharing secrets that were embarrassing about ourselves. <laughs> and it like opened up a whole world of like, oh good, we can say that in front of each other. You're not gonna judge me. So then it, it just, we just completely bonded and, and grew really close after that. Francesca. These are two, so yeah, we have Mr. and Mrs. Smith in name, but this is a complete reimagination. These are two very normal people who you don't expect to be able to kick that much ass. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, what can you share about your insight and in working with Donald in, in creating this completely different Mr. and Mrs. Smith? We, we knew that if we were going to do something like this, we wanted it to be very original because I think a lot of people have fatigue of these reboots, mm -hmm. you know, and we wanted it to feel like something fresh. Otherwise, in our opinion, why do it? And the idea of sort of having these two normal people felt like such a great way to sort of access them. Anybody could be a John or a Jane. It sort of almost accidentally or subliminally became this mantra of our generation of this notion of a dream, especially after the pandemic. It's like, what would you do for that brownstone in New York with your partner in life? Um, how could we make somebody want to be a part of that? And so that was the direction that we went in. Maya, we know you so well from Pen15. We have any Pen15 fans in the house? Ow! Ow! <laughs> this was 
something so different for you. Is that what attracted you to the role? Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, after a couple, five years or whatever, what felt like forever of wearing that wig, I was ready to <laughs> have a different look. And um, yeah, no, I was attracted to this role and also really just the creators. I mean, for me, I was really excited about um, just jumping in as an actor and not having to wear all of the hats, but still feeling like I get to collaborate and and work with people that I really admire. And this role was uh, definitely a challenge for me in that at first I feel like I had to restrain a lot of my emotions or thoughts and then I wouldn't be able to like explode until the end. And yeah, it was just really gratifying. Thank you. <laughs> How much fun did you have uh, with the fighting scenes? Too much. They, I <laughs> loved them. I loved them. <laughs> you get to beat up Donald a lot. I think I like thought I was better than I was, and I would always be like, "Just put me in. Like, let me do it. Let me." And they were like, N "No, it's okay." But I went. But I, I, I did do a fair amount, you know. And it was really, it was fun because I think it's just so, it's so physical. So it's actually so freeing for someone who's in her head a lot. Uh, just being able to be so, it's in something so physically demanding, you just lose all thought. Like it's just, you're just pushed into the present. So it felt really great for this character. Now this, the series across the entire season had some amazing guest stars. You had Alexander Skarsgård, Wagner Mora, Isa Gonzalez. I mean, the list is endless. And I have to say, can I pick a favorite? Can I pick a favorite? Of course. Beverly Glover, Donald's <laughs> mom making her television debut, Woo! at playing his yeah, mom. Are. She needs the guest star Emmy uh, She's nomination. She's amazing. What can you share uh, on Pen15? You got to work with your mom, and, and on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you get to work with Donald's mom. I mean, it was great because she is so, she was such a natural. And I think you can take it for granted that it's like, oh, yeah, you can just walk in, have your mom play. It's very hard. And Donald was so respectful to his mom. I feel like when I was directing, my mom was like, Mom! Like, I would get so, I would revert <laughs> back. To 13, but um, and it does kind of happen no matter what. But yeah. she just fit into the set and the crew so seamlessly and was really natural and great. There was a moment once you guys, it was a scene that we cut actually of the two of you arguing in bed, and oh, and that. Beverly kept taking your side. <laughs> she was like, Why would he do that? And like afterwards, it was like getting on Donald about how his performance as John was like not nice to Jane. <laughs> so there was some of that too. <laughs> yeah. Are there any plans to uh, catapult her into her own big career in Hollywood? I, Stephen Glover, Donald's brother, said that if Beverly Glover gets an Emmy, she will be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm all for it. I actually just want to do a campaign to get Beverly Glover an Emmy. <laughs> Deadline's got you, girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, Maya, there's so much growth for these characters throughout the entire season and in, in our finale. Hopefully everybody's already watched it more than once. Um, there's in, in the final where they take some truth serum and there's so much, um, you guys are bare. Um, what can you say about your approach to playing this character from the beginning, you know, these are strangers to when these are two people at the end completely spilling their truth. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of like modulating on set, like, cause it, you know, you're playing this cat and mouse game in the beginning and you're trying not to reveal too much, but also reveal little, but also have chemistry. So it's this like funny balance that we were always trying to nail. I don't feel like, I, f I think we reshot that scene right, later on, but for, the, the sorry, the se not the true serum, I'm talking about in the pilot, the when they're in the diner yeah. or the restaurant. Yeah, that. Um, but yeah, once we get to the truth serum, I mean, that just felt like I took a drug and got to like release all inhibition and everything, and it was really scary, but then it felt like, you know, my theater classes in college of like rolling on the floor and just... <laughs> sucking on each other's face and letting everything out. Um, so it was really just gratifying <laughs> to do. 
But that's also the moment where it's, that could cement like their entire future and then we don't know what happens. Are they dead alive, Francesca? <laughs> I, I know you even said this when we weren't on the stage that you were going to try to get this out of me. And I, <laughs> I, it, I, my answer is not going to be as satisfying as you want, but it is the truth. I think it's for three different kinds of people. It's if you are a glass half full person, you believe that they both get out alive. If you are a glass half empty person, they did. And, and if you're sort of more of like a realistic person, you assume that maybe one of them is alive. So... I think it really, it's, it's, it depends on your psyche. So what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I, think they got, I think that they got out alive and Maya's ready to film season two with her baby bump. <laughs> what do you guys say? More, we want season two? <laughs> Are there any plans for more? We would, we would love to do a season two. Um, Donald and I have said this a few times now, but the only way that we would want to do a season two in terms of the writing and the story is to like kick season one's ass and make it that much better. So we would love to. We really would. It just it depends on if the people want it. <laughs> I mean, do we want it? <laughs> Come on, louder, we want it! <laughs> Now, uh, cats are really having a moment. We used to always see dogs in TV and film, and we have Max, the, the cat character, Max. What was it like working with a, a feline co-star? I'm allergic to cats, <laughs> um, and I told Fran that at the beginning, and she was like, all right, we'll explore like maybe a ferret or something, I don't know, and then they're like, sorry, it's a cat. And so I got to like meet Chi Chi, that's Max's real name. And Chi Chi was really sweet and really talented. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Although we, Chi Chi was also one day ran under the stage. Oh, yeah. And we, and, and we couldn't find Chi Chi. And I had initially had Max in like every scene. And after that incident, I was like, maybe Max is on the couch sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we also had, I think we cut it out. I wish we had the outtake to show, but like, I clearly am not good with cats, and I was like trying to pick it up casually, and then it just started like crawling on my head and like clawing my eyes out, and it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> cats are divas. I mean, even the actors. Are <laughs> we have some cat people in the audience. Um, what are some of your favorite moments uh, that you're taking away with you from the experience, whether we continue on or not? Favorite moments? Yeah. Uh, I mean, truthfully, getting to film with people that you admire and that also become your best friends, it's like it, those two don't always come hand in hand, and I just feel so lucky. So it was really just getting to become a family with you guys that, was my favorite part of it all. How about you? That's going to make me emotional, but I feel exactly <laughs> the same way. I, it's creating something that you care about with people who you care about this much that also care that much about the project. It was life-changing. It's something I'll never forget. Uh, we were like these scrappy kids with these low-budget shows that all of us had worked on, and one day we were like in the middle of Manhattan about to shoot. It was day one. Oh, man. Yeah, we, we, there were lights everywhere. We were doing these crazy chase sequence. And I remember, like, Hero, Donald, Maya, and I were walking down the street. We all looked at each other and we were like, oh, my God, you guys. Look what we're doing. <laughs> kind of felt like, who let us do this? Exactly. Like, how did how we, do get, they, away how did we get away with this? <laughs> exactly. Well, what I'm mostly taking away from this is the experience of watching these normal people, which is something that you and Donald do fantastically. Um, Literally, Isa Gonzalez and Alexander Skarsgård were the first uh, John and Jane that we meet. And I didn't even view them as the big stars. They were just normal people. So if you can tell me why it was important for you to, um, to present these characters in this way. I, why we presented them as normal people, meaning yeah. Maya and Donald's characters? Yeah, well, really everyone. Everyone. Well, because I think, I think it's so much more, it's, it's so easy to access and relate to people if you feel like you can fill their shoes in some way. And we've had so many amazing you know, characters in terms of the spy genre where they're so debonair or they're so slick or they're, they're, so, they're too cool. And we really wanted to make this show about underdogs. We really wanted to show, you know, these in-between moments. The first idea that I even had for the show 
was that while John or Jane is running around when they get home, they have a blister on their heel because they wore the wrong shoes. You know, like that was truly the inspiration for the entire thing was that blister in the wrong shoes. I just wanted that Love version that. Of, of the story. Well, thank you guys so much. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Give it up. Give it up thank for this so much, beautiful team guys. behind Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, <laughs>